Hello friends, my name is Dante, and in honor of The Last of Us 2 coming out soon, I tried beating The Last of Us without using any guns. Now, I know there's going to be some of you little smarties who want to say, well, what about this part where you have to use a gun? Or how about this part? Yes, I'll be explaining all of that and more throughout the video. So what do I mean by no guns? Does that mean I can use the bow? Does that mean Molotovs and bombs are okay to use? I could mean a lot of things by no guns. Let's clear this up by showing you a few rules I stuck to during this run. Rule number one, I'm only allowed to use melee. This includes my fists, any weapons I find, shivs, Ellie's a little switchblade, and I can use all bricks and bottles I find. Rule number two, no guns or equipment allowed. What does this mean? This means I can't use any guns, duh. I'm not allowed to use the bow, and I'm not allowed to use any dangerous throwables like molotovs, nail bombs, or smoke bombs. And rule number three, no using listen mode. I did use it once or twice throughout the beginning, but after that I decided to challenge myself and not use it anymore. For this challenge, I played on the hard difficulty. Free grounded mode, man, that's too much. And finally, I wanted to kill all enemies throughout the run, or at least most of them. This wasn't necessarily a rule for me, just a general guideline. So as always, I want to mention a few interesting key areas and situations throughout this run, and oh baby, is there ever a lot of them. I'll be explaining how I handled groups of infected, how I handled the groups of human enemies, Bill's trap, the first bloater fight, the way I handled the hotel basement, protecting Ellie and the boys with the sniper rifle, a very close call I had the, at the university, Ellie's insane portion, the seemingly impossible subway tunnel, and the hospital. The hospital part, combined with this challenge, made me a very sad boy. Okay, let's start with how I dealt with infected. We have four types of infected, as any player of The Last of Us knows, and each type gets progressively more difficult as we go. We have the runners, who are easy, stalkers, who are frigging annoying, just like in real life, <laughs> clickers, who are hard, and bloaters, who are impossible. Three, two, one, fight! Arg. Bloop. Rawr. Arg. Runners are the easiest enemy to kill in the game, and they're really only dangerous in large groups or when combined with other infected types. All I did was beat them up. There's no special tricks or anything, just pure fists. Next we have Stalkers, those cursed things that are halfway between Runner and Clicker. You only come across them twice throughout the game, but holy heck are they ever annoying. They're stronger than Runners and attack better, meaning they damage you more frequently than Runners. Again, all you really need to do about these guys is beat them up with whatever you can. Then, we have the clickers. Oof. These bad boys won't let you punch them, and sometimes when you go to hit them over the head with a weapon, they'll still get you. Why is this bad? Unlike the runners and stalkers, clickers kill you instantly. And being that this is a melee only challenge, clickers are problematic. The main ways I dealt with them was to sneak up on them and shiv them, which insta-kills them, to use modded weapons on them that insta-kill them, such as the nailed, or I guess, scissored, baseball bat, pipe, or whatever. Sometimes I'd even get lucky enough to cave their heads in with a brick, but this was rare. And finally, my personal favorite, using one of my buddies as bait and when the clicker grabs them, to run up and super punch them to death. Yes, this is the only time you can punch clickers as you'll see. And last, but certainly not least, the bloaters, aka the big boys. I'm not going to explain how I dealt with these guys, you're going to have to watch the whole video for that. Ha! <laughs> you fell right into my trap. No really though, I'll explain it soon. The first area that I want to talk about is the first time you encounter spores with Tess. There's a poor, poor man lying underneath the rubble of the building, and he's begging you to put a bullet in him. Usually I'd have no problem doing this, and I always sacrifice a bullet for this man, but unfortunately, he was begging on the wrong day. I just had to look him in those devastated eyes and slowly walk away. It's okay though, I'm sure a runner ripped him apart, so at least he didn't starve to death. Oh, wait a minute. Thinking back now, I think he wanted a bullet in the head so a runner wouldn't rip him apart. Oh shit! And my first encounter with the runners was a little nerve wracking. The first time always is, know what I mean? <laughs> Luckily, runners are easily dealt with with your fists. I mean, Tess could have helped me during this whole encounter, but at least I showed her how badass I am. She even complimented me after. Then, we have our first human enemies. I'll let you guess what the difference is between infected enemies and human enemies, and why humans make this challenge harder for me. You got it? That's right! It's because they have guns, while infected don't. The first part was honestly so fun, just running straight up to the bad guy's cover and beating the heck out of them with my fists. 
And I think Joel has the strength of the gods or something because he just completely Superman punched this guy into the brick wall. Do not tussle with this man. The second battle we did at the dock was just awesome. I tried being stealthy, but it didn't work. Even though Tess had her gun, I killed most of the armed men with my fists. Joel is just an unstoppable force. Next we meet Ellie, and I mean, no judgement here, but Joel seemed a little forward with her. I do not condone this behaviour, this is bad. So anyway, let's skip the boring parts that don't matter to this run. Fast forward and stop! We get to the first clicker in the game. Well, second clicker, but I mean the first one we actually fight. Oh shoot, I almost forgot to explain how absolutely critical bricks and bottles are in this game. Or at least for the specific melee only run. Real quick, both bricks and bottles are great for stunning enemies throughout the game. This is especially important when there's more than one enemy. Let's say there's two enemies wanting to attack me at the same time. I can throw my bottle at one, leaving them stunned, giving me a great opportunity to run up and beat up the second enemy. Not only this, but bricks are melee weapons in themselves and actually work better than 2x4s and pipes. In my opinion, at least. Bricks kill the enemy faster and there's plenty of them scattered throughout the game. And that's exactly what I did to the first clicker. See, most people would distract the clicker by throwing a bottle and then they'd quietly slip away hoping the poor fungus bag would never notice them. Not me. Not this guy. What did I do? I immediately went up behind the clicker and caved its head in with a goddamn brick. That's right. We take big risks here on the Dante Ravioli channel. Now, I didn't use this benefit as often as the others, but you can also use bricks and bottles to distract enemies, which makes stealth portions much easier and it definitely came in handy for me a couple of times. What I found is that it was always a better option to take out clickers first before any other enemy. This is for two reasons. One, you can fist fight a runner, and if another runner comes up behind you and attacks you, it's fine because all they do is damage you a little bit, whereas a clicker will grab you and insta-kill you. And two, unfortunately, this game won't let you equip your fists if you're carrying a weapon. So, if I had a scissored baseball bat and wanted to use it specifically for a clicker, since you can't fist fight clickers, I couldn't put my weapon away and save it for later. I had to use whatever was in my hand at the time. This isn't the case for bricks and bottles, which is why I like them. You can equip and unequip them as you please. Basically, I wanted to kill clickers first if I had a melee weapon, so I wouldn't waste it on a runner that could just as easily die to my fists. We come to the second battle of the infected, which I happened to beat on my first try. Hell yeah. And here was the first fight that actually took me a couple of tries. I call it the Dance of the Clickers. Yes, I know it's a retarded name. I basically just used shivs on the clickers, pretty well the best thing I could use shivs for anyway, and when I ran out of useful things to use against them, I would throw a bottle at them and then charge a brick into their face. Ah, bricks, you never let me down. You know the story of the three little pigs? That last pig was on to something, guys. The next room with the three runners was interesting because I choked them all out pretty well right next to each other and none of them got suspicious. And I do want to say, anytime there was a battle to be fought, it was hilarious to be Joel and just start clubbing everyone and everything with your fists. I mean, if that was real life, the people around you would be terrified of you because they'd think you were a crazy person. My kill count was higher than anyone else with a gun and that just makes me happy. But getting back to it, here's where I really had fun. The part right after Tessa's death against the armored soldiers. Imagine, you're looking for a target with your five armored buddies and you're all expecting a long search into the dark building ahead of you. Then all of a sudden, some crazy guy comes charging out of the shadows at you with a 2x4 and starts completely beating the shit out of you and your men. <laughs> Cracking heads open on tables, smashing them on walls. Five armored guys versus one crazy boy who would win. Now here comes the first big oof of the gameplay. Bill's Trap. Oh boy, it's like a love-hate relationship I have with Bill. Sometimes he screws me over by making me fail a challenge, and other times we can be a dream team. Try whatever you want on this part, but when you're hanging upside down with a fridge tied to your ankle, you have to use your revolver. There's no question to it. Ellie can survive her head hitting an explosive tripwire. Oh Christ! She can survive a bite from an infected but she can't survive a whole mob of zombies wanting to rip her apart. So here is one of a few times where we need to use our gun to progress. You can say the challenge has failed at this point if you want, but so far I haven't needed to use any guns for a part because it was too hard to beat with melee, which is my main concern. And don't worry, I've kept count of how many times I've needed to use a gun throughout the playthrough. It should be amazing enough that we've made it this far into the game with only melee weapons while also killing almost every enemy in our path. That side I don't ever go to because it's filled with infected. So we're gonna need more guns. Excuse me? Bill, do you even know what I'm trying to do here? We need less guns! 
Luckily for us, Billy Boy, or any partners for that matter, makes great bait. What do I mean by this? When a clicker grabs Bill, it gives me a perfect chance to run up and punch the liquor square in the face. If you can call that a face. And yes, it does do damage. Bill is what makes parts like this possible. And the nice thing is, he'll even kill infected with his shotgun. Bill's almost made up for making us fail the challenge. Almost. Freaking Bill. I felt like a god killing clickers with my bare fists. We even had this close call that you're watching now where four clickers cornered us in a backyard. Bill and I were a goddamn dream team and together we did a beautiful job. I love you, Bill. Not in a gay way, of course, because I know you got those gay magazines in your house. Bill, you naughty dog. So we got to the school, which wasn't too bad thanks to Bill's help, but then we get to gun usage number two, and it involves the bloater in the school gym. I wasn't sure how I'd go about this part, but I knew I would have to do a few attempts. My first idea was to kill all of the runners in the gym first, and then attack the bloater with melee anytime it went to throw a spore pocket at me. Unfortunately, this doesn't work, and the bloater will rip your face open immediately upon impact. So then I tried waiting it out, because Bill uses his shotgun on it, and I thought eventually he would kill it. That's no as well, or at least I wasn't patient enough to see if it would work. Apparently someone online on Reddit said that Bill can kill it, but you need to at least shoot it once. Another person even said the longest he ever saw somebody attempt this part was an hour, and Bill still didn't kill it. Either way, I didn't have the patience to find out, and that's a lot coming from me. This is coming from the guy who did the same boss fight in Resident Evil 2 for 9 hours straight. But listen, my final strategy was brilliant. There's a few obstacles around the gym that you can climb on, and guess what? Bloaters can't climb onto things like other infected can. Or at least, not the bloater in the school gym. They just sit there and stare at you, every so often throwing a spore at you. So I had the brilliant idea of jumping up on one of these platforms and kicking the bloater to death while Bill shot it with his shotgun. I genuinely thought it would work, but after maybe 10 minutes of just endless kicking and kicking and kicking, I caved and finished it with a nail bomb and a single shotgun shot. My theory is that your partners can lower bloater's health for you substantially, but can't actually completely kill them. It's the same story with David and Ellie. Technically, if I had thrown a Molotov at it and finished it off with a nail bomb, I could have said I killed it without guns, but again, this is really a melee only challenge, so there's strike two. Frig you, bloater. Now we come across the truck part with Bill. This part was easy peasy, all I really had to do was use Bill as bait. Not only that, but there were plenty of bricks around which helped me even more. Then we arrive at the hotel. Now I have to say this, I came across so many bathrooms where the toilet paper was put on backwards. Don't you guys know that's a sin? Let me just ask who the real monsters are. Right, anyway, are you guys ready for the scariest part of the game? Well, I'd say second scariest part, and you'll see why in a few minutes. We arrive at the hotel basement. For this, all I did was kill as many stalkers as I could before turning on the generator. Luckily, you don't have to kill the bloater here, so I just narrowly slipped through the door and was good to go. The fight with Ellie as a sniper wasn't too bad, in fact, it was really easy. I thought I was quite the little comedian when a guy was terrified talking about a tourist killing all of the men. In mid-sentence, I threw a brick at him. Ah, it's the little things that count. And as you know, we end up meeting Henry and Sam. I waited in the shadows for Ellie to pick up Sam's little toy, but she just wouldn't do it. It's like she knew I was there. Eventually, I got far enough away from her that she did the deed. One moment the toy was there with her standing over it, the next it was gone. Hmm, I wonder what happened, guys. You keep him safe, go! Too bad he doesn't know I don't use guns. Looks like Sam has a very low chance of survival. Sorry, buddy. This part was surprisingly hard, and I mean even with the clickers killed first, because like I said, stalkers attack you a lot more often than runners, and they're an all-around smart and tricky enemy. Eventually, I got through this part, but it took me a few tries and lots of medkits. It also seemed to take forever, as if the damn things wouldn't stop spawning, but they eventually did. With Henry's part, I tried to kill all the infected that came at us, and I just kept dying. This is because I forgot that Sam and Ellie opened the door for you at some point, but of course, I eventually figured it out. Now the gosh darn sniper part. I killed about half of the big boys and then booked it into the house, taking bullets to the back along the way. But that's okay, it made me a real man. Sadly, you have to use the sniper rifle here or you can't progress. So that's gun usage number three. All I have to say about Tommy's part is that this is when I noticed a big change with enemy damage and behavior. Humans seem to be more dangerous now and I couldn't just run up and club them with a pipe like I used to. From here on out, I'd have to use a lot of stealth. The part where you need to turn on the generator for Ellie at the university initially seems difficult, but as long as you run up, punch an infected in the face once, run back and repeat, you'll be fine. 
Ellie even helps you by shooting through the gate. I didn't even have to use one med kit. Now here is by far the scariest part of the game for me. When I play this game normally, I always kill every enemy down in this dorm, which makes it easy to open the door. But obviously, there's no way I can kill them all with only melee weapons, especially the bloater. So, I had to use my secret weapon, Stealth Baby. It took me probably two minutes to slowly sneak over to the exit door, and I even had to slip by right in front of the bloater. But, I did make it. Now here comes the scariest part in the game for me. With the bloater just a few feet away, you have to bust through the door and every infected in here will come after you the second you try it. So I had to go as fast as I could and I just barely escaped the bloater. Holy hell, I think Joel needs to change his pants. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the bloater here because before attempting this challenge, I really thought you'd need to. But nope, we've gotten this far in the game and have only had to use guns three times. And that's only because we were forced to. I'd say that's pretty good. Actually, let me ruin what I just said. When Joel has his little oopsie and starts bleeding out on the floor, God damn! He has to use his gun on the two bad guys barging through the door. I tried not using my gun, but you have to. Luckily, throughout this whole part, that's the only time you need to. You don't need to shoot the shotgun guy or anyone else in your way. And uh, by the way, Joel and Ellie hear a noise upstairs, and Joel tells Ellie to stay close. But what does she do? She immediately goes upstairs to check it out while I just stand there staring at her. Am I a joke to you, Ellie? Right after this, we have the deer hunt with Ellie. Technically, we are shooting a bow here, not a gun, but I'll still count it. I did try chasing the deer without shooting it, but it just runs you in circles. You have to shoot it to progress. But listen, as Ellie, this is the last time I used a quote, gun. Yes, I know a bow isn't a gun, okay? Back off. The part with the infected bursting into the house was insane. I basically just waited for David to get grabbed, and when he does, you can insta-kill whatever grabbed him whether that's a runner or a clicker. I don't even think I got injured. Then David said this about my rifle skills. You weren't kidding. You're a better shot with that thing than I am. Bro, I didn't even use a gun. What are you talking about? I did have to use a Molotov and nail bomb on the bloater though. I thought that maybe David could kill it with enough revolver shots, but it's the same story as Bill. So I had to finish the job. That strike six, and Christ, I'm just gonna talk about how badass I was as Ellie. I killed dozens of dangerous armed men with a little puny switchblade. Rifle? Handgun? No no no, I choose switchblade please. I mean I was freaking amazing, and this part was 10 times more fun than playing as Joel. What I would do was sneak up behind a man which would allow me to do a semi stealth kill on them. I say semi because sometimes other enemies would know immediately where I was and other times they wouldn't have a clue what was happening. And for any brave souls who found me and were willing to charge at me, I'd just throw a bottle at them, giving me a perfect opportunity to stab the hell out of them. Just talking about this part makes me want to play it again. Then we have Joel get up and at him to go looking for Ellie. Clearly, Joel is very weak, his crouch walk is super slow, and he's just an all around weak boy. At this point, there were like 6 or 7 armed men searching throughout the town for me in a clumped group. I had no choice but to charge them, and most of their group ran away screaming. I guess I thought I was some crazy psycho, only using my fist to disembowel foes. Anyway, we chopped up David and escaped. You know how it is. Now we get to the infected tunnel. At first, I thought I had to kill all of the infected and lead the bloaters away from the side we needed to go to so that I could boost Ellie up safely. I was doing pretty well at this, but this part just took forever and I was draining so many resources. Right when I thought I had the best chance possible, Ellie said that there were too many infected chasing us for a boost. I guess she's the one calling the shots now and my orders mean nothing. So I tried sneaking through the entire tunnel. I didn't think it would work, but guess what? It did. I boosted Ellie up, she yelled, look out below, and sent the crate crashing down. Apparently none of the infected heard it. Bro, what the heck? And here's another time where we need to use our guns. A resting clicker gets up and grabs Ellie. Again, maybe I could just throw a nail bomb or even get a good angle and throw a bottle, but I'll just count it anyway. I did try to glitch melee it through the fence, but it didn't work. So I just used my shotgun. Finally, we get to the Firefly Hospital, and oh boy, is this part ever hard with only melee weapons. And I mean it's really hard. Wait, I uh, take that back, it sounded weird. Okay, you guys know what I mean. Here's the situation. We have dozens of armed military soldiers all in full body suits with machine guns and military training, versus one random guy with caveman weapons. I failed this part so many times it's not even funny. What I first tried was choking everyone out, but that only got me so far. After that, I decided I didn't need to save any more supplies, so I started using shivs, which made this part 10 times easier. But it was still very difficult. 
I killed the entire first floor of soldiers, that's how badass I am. But after that, it got sickening, so I killed about half of the second floor soldiers and just sprinted to the exit. This one piece of garbage tried to stop me, but luckily I got away just in the nick of time. Of course, when I made it to Ellie, I kicked the shit out of the doctors. Damn, I probably could have gone easier on the poor doctors because they're just doing their jobs, but I just couldn't help it. Maybe I am a crazy psycho. And you guys know how the rest of the game goes. I completely destroyed the military with caveman weapons. I'm officially the best gamer in the world. Just as a little summary before we continue, I used guns for Bill's trap, the first bloater, the sniper rifle part, saving Ellie at the university, shooting the deer, killing the other bloater, and saving Ellie from the clicker. A grand total of seven times. It seems like a lot, but remember, these were all times where I had no choice but to use my guns to progress. I never used them because the part was too hard or because my supplies were too low. Just think of all the battles I went through, the hundreds of enemies I killed, it's really amazing that I only used my gun that handful of times. I was mostly surprised with Ellie's part. I was sure I'd have to use my gun on human enemies, but nope. And don't forget that I never used listen mode to help myself out either. So unfortunately, you can't beat The Last of Us without using any guns, but you can get damn close. I had a blast replaying this game again, it definitely deserves a spot in my top 3 favorite games of all time. See, I kinda like failing challenges because then it makes the content a little more exciting for you guys. You don't know whether I'll win or lose. One extra thing I want to throw in there is that almost no enemies I defeated gave me ammo. So this just goes to show, don't be afraid to use your ammo guys. The more ammo you have, the less you get. You might as well have fun and use it. This challenge was so fun and if you guys have any other challenge video ideas for this game, let me know down in the comments below because I'd definitely be open to playing this game again. I'm sure like me, you guys can't wait for part 2 to come out. Hell yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, all I ask is that you subscribe to me because I make about 2-3 to three new challenge gaming videos every week. And make sure to click the notification bell or you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. It's important you click that bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.